All right, hi AP students. Welcome to your really brief intro to buffers pre-lecture. We've been talking a lot about strong acid, strong base titrations and general titration calculations. Um, and now we're gonna start hitting up that um, weak acid, strong base, weak base, strong acid, weak involving acid or base titrations that require us to account for um, the equilibrium that your weak acid or weak base is in with water. And um, of course the presence of its conjugate now. Um, so what we have to account for in weak acid, weak base titrations is this thing that we call this resulting status of having a buffer. And a buffer, okay, a buffer is a type of solution that resists change in pH. Um, another way of putting it is it's a solution that stabilizes the pH, okay? When additional small, keyword here being small, amounts of strong acid or strong base, depending on what your titrant is. Okay, so it's really just considering the titrant, okay, um, is, 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 well, added, <laughs> is added to solution. Um, so what we see is that buffer regions only occur, okay, they only occur in the beginning stages. of weak acid or weak base titrations. And this is when you have this interesting equilibrium where you have your conjugate species being present um, that creates kind of this area where, oh, as long as you're adding tiny amounts, right? The drop by drop, you don't see great change. You're still working your way to a where you're gonna get that color change, but it's not such a linear like drop, drop, drop. Oh, every time I see something happen. Um, so it's a little hard to explain, but what we see is actually visually in the titration curve, we see the buffer regions. So when we consider a weak acid, okay, and a strong base titration, such as the one depicted up here, in a normal titration, we actually see that curve be bulbous, concave, and then up, and then it kind of merges into what you see now. But with the buffer region, what we see is in the buffer zone, we actually see that concave bulbous initial beginning, okay? Um, kind of one, shift upwards and two, become more convex. Um, so what happens is visually speaking, you see the initial curve become more convex, become more like this in the buffer region, okay? That's a visual trick. What is, what is that actually depicting for us? Well, one, it's showing that the pH isn't changing very much. Notice how your pH range stays pretty consistent across this more convex, okay, um, area it's convex portion of the curve versus the bulbous region, you see um, more change in the pH just from a completely graphical perspective. And um, what this means at the particulate level is that we're actually seeing here a depiction of the mix of weak acid concentration and the conjugate base formed. being also present in solution. Uh, and of course we call this the acidic buffer region or acid buffer region, acidic or acid buffer. Okay. And then the same thing is true when we look at a weak base and strong acid titration. Okay. Um, we would see normally in this curve, we would see a bulbous beginning 
down and then flows into what we have depicted here. But the beginning half of the titration is changed. Now, instead of having visual trig wise, now instead of having the initial curve be convex, we now see it be concave. Initial curve becomes more concave, where we see it kind of dip down and go down. And this is what we call our buffer region for a weak base titration, okay? And of course, paralleling what we described above at the particulate level, this is showing us that we now have a mix of weak acid concentration and its conjugate, sorry, did I just say weak acid? I totally meant weak base weak base concentration and its conjugate acid present, uh, HB plus, all right? Um, and we would call this region the formation of a basic buffer, aligning to the fact that it is a buffer created from a weak base solution, okay? And so, what we have here is a really conceptually one interesting relationship and effect, but two, we actually through a series of derivations that honestly don't matter, you don't have to derive them. You get actually a new type of relationship between pH, pKa, and the concentration of the weak species with its conjugate. And we call this new relationship, this new equation, Henderson-Hasselbach equation. And the Henderson-Hasselbach equation offers us, as I said, a relationship between pH, pKa, and then the concentrations of the weak with its conjugate and the conjugate, okay? Whatever that weak species is, whether it be weak acid or weak base, and therefore conjugate base and weak acid or so forth. And the Henderson-Hasselbach equation is really useful because not only does it offer us a relationship, but it offer us a much quicker mathematical tool for, for defining regions and calculating, um, calculating the pH as well as the molarities at a certain state in the buffer region. So it's a quicker mathematical tool or process. Okay, for quantifying any point in the titration that involves uh, specifically the buffer region of the titration. And so what we get is our equation, henderson hasselbach says that pH is equal to pKa plus log of the conjugate base all over the acid Okay, concentration. And what's really great about this um, henderson hasselbach equation is not only is it one, a quicker mathematical process where we can just immediately solve for pH, pK, or the concentrations of either the conjugate or the acid, but two, we actually don't have to flip this reaction at all, even if we're dealing from the acid, or sorry, from the base perspective. This equation through, you could prove it through a derivation. I wouldn't, it's not necessarily. Um, but this equation actually doesn't need to be flipped. When um, calculating from the base perspective. Um, because if you were to derive this, you would find that you could you would get the exact same setup um, as the Henderson Hasselbach equation. And you would find that your base concentration would be on top in the logarithmic okay, um, portion and your conjugate acid value concentration would be still on bottom. So either way, it's like really base over acid is really maybe even a more generic way of putting it. It's not even about conjugate, it's more just like base over acid, all right? Um, and so it's really nice, it's really lovely, and it's gonna save you so much time in our future calculations that we will address tomorrow. So um, best of luck. I hope that um, this unit's math has been treating you a little bit kinder. Remember, study the process. The numbers will come, but the real 
big issue is understanding the conceptual reason why you do each step. How does each step contribute to you quantifying and describing a titration between any mixture of acid and base? Um, quick note before I close out, we will not be hitting weak acid, weak base titrations. They're their own beast that you will probably address in college. So um, don't feel like I'm missing something. So um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Good job, you guys.